Hello, my name is Mami Sek and I would be interviewing Mr. Bomani for Youth Entrepreneurship Project that I will be doing at Pearl Academy Math and Science Institute. So, Mr. Bomani, what is your definition of an entrepreneur? Yes, Mami, appreciate uh, you having me for this interview for your project. Yes, an entrepreneur is someone who is effectively working uh, for themselves independently. It doesn't mean that they're working alone. They work, they're, they're the sole or the main person that runs the business enterprise. Uh, like myself, I run uh, Bomani Technology, which is a technical service and support operation. And also uh, Africa for the Africans Tourism Investment, uh, which I'm the director of uh, both, op both operations. So in that situation, I myself would be an entrepreneur, uh, someone that uh, goes out there and uh, get the business, uh, organize certain things and create the opportunity where you are employing or creating opportunities for others and at the same time too you're selling services so you're you're you know you have a customer base so those would be uh, one of a prime example of an entrepreneur in uh, my sense oh, really awesome so why did you choose to become an entrepreneur yes um, I felt like I've served my time I did uh, four years or four and a half years in the United States uh, Navy as an aircraft technician between 18 to 22 and I spent um, a good uh, about six years as an aircraft technician for the airlines uh, so a good 10 years from 18 to 28 and I wanted to just look more into the future of doing something that will give you more independent uh, way of life so I started thinking about in information technology repairing computers doing web design and getting into the whole world of uh, technical service and support uh, so I started this really just studying uh, doing a lot of researching uh, building my own computer system and organizing my business office uh, to do that type of work. Uh, so it, 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 it became one of those things where you, you put the work in and you study and you kind of build a small business. So I went from studying to being able to do and provide certain services to where I've been able to begin to start marketing myself as a business person. And then that became the flow of how things started. And then you know you, you build a communication base where people are referring you and also you're picking up business based on us doing your online presence. So that was a, you know, a good flow of this getting to things and then once things start going then you're able to maybe just you know, separate from your job or you know or, or work less at, you know, for someone else and build your credibility to work more for yourself yeah really really awesome okay so the next question what are some of the pros and cons of being an entrepreneur the main uh, pros for me because uh, it's never always about uh, making more money sometimes you do certain entrepreneurship work and you may you know you may make more or you may make less but you definitely have the flexibility as far as uh, salary, as far as how much you make, and more important, the flexibility of your schedule, whether it's family, travel, and things like that. So those are the things that, that works for me personally. And I want to have the flexibility to, if someone needs to call me or do business with me or communicate with me, I want to be able to communicate with them without being just restricted based on a schedule. Uh, so that's, for me, that's, that's mainly it. Yeah. Wow. But uh, as far as the... The, the, you know, so those are the pros, but as far as uh, the cons, the, the cons is, um, you know, it's a situation where sometimes you may have to just uh, be working seven days a week and just up for long hours, but you're doing that to give yourself flexibility for maybe travel or business and things like that. So for me, for people like myself, it works out perfect. Yeah, must be highly motivated to do that. <laughs> yeah. What were your career plans when you graduated from high school? Career plans when I graduated, I wanted to be an electro, electrical or slash electronic technician. Uh, so I started looking for different uh, opportunities and looked at college, looked at uh, technical school, and the best opportunity that worked for me was uh, the, was joining the U.S. Navy. This provided the flexibility where I was able to get paid, get some of the best training in the world, and also have access to travel, and you know, and also just uh, be able to compete with you know, other people of my age. Uh, in you know in in a, in a world of this uh, competition of this you know building a career so it you know it, it it give you the discipline but also the competitiveness to where when once you know you figure when you get out uh, into civilian world you have an edge and uh, opportunity uh, or advantage so and that's what I feel once I got out also so it's it was a plan that worked perfect. Do you feel that owning your own business has been worth the conflicts that you had to deal with? Oh, absolutely! It's been uh, worth it. It's been 12, 13 years of just um, wow. growing uh, and learning. Cause 
it's 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 hard to learn so much in a short period of time. So you consistently learning from you know from day one, and it's just an everyday change of just learning. So it's it's even if mistakes are made or things don't work out, uh, it's you know you tend to kind of just work on proficiency getting better you know like we do tours I've done I've been to Ghana 14 times I've done wow. you know there's a lot of tours between 20 to 40 different people and what you look at in that situation is you know you you look at everything from all the things you're doing right to all the things that may not necessarily be you know the way you want it and then you just you're building adjustments and you're making consistent improvements so that's one of the main things about entrepreneur if you just really into your craft and really want to see it grow you just look at it like that and then look at the people that you're working with and just keep on making those adjustments so how did you spot the opportunity or develop the idea for your enterprise well the, the main thing I was looking at at that time before I started uh, Bomani Technology was the world market of computers and technology and it's something that I realized I can do in my home, home and I can just do a lot of research and experiment and then as far as uh, Africa for the Africans tours it's just being a part of a conscious energy and studying a lot of books about your roots and culture and wanting to say you know I want to enjoy or travel to the continent and then when you get there you realize that you know you, you can put together business tours and get more people interested in going there and you know and add on living and doing business and things like that just beyond this regular tour and so it's you know it, it, it's something where you just you know you see an opportunity and you seize it and take advantage of it and, and at that time um, those are the two best opportunities uh, for me and that was when roughly around I was uh, 28 uh, between 27 to 28 years old and it has just been a smooth journey okay so next question what type of planning did you do prior to starting up your enterprise as well uh, the, the main plan you're going to do is, is a lot of study and you want to organize um, the things that uh, you know you want to do you want to put together your business plan you want to put together your website you want to put together this uh, you know ba basic uh, documentation as far as um, you know, how to go about uh, strategically you know the future of what you're looking to do but at the same time too you, you're not starting with a whole lot you're starting with just very basic mm -hmm. and then as the year or the months go by you just add in like at one point I didn't have um, I didn't have a banner uh, right away and yeah, so those are things that you know you just work on work on what you have and work with what you have and then you just keep on adding on to it so you may start up with one computer then you make a little money and then you buy another computer and then you know you buy more parts and the same thing with uh, you know with even international business you begin to just work to where you're ahead of the game and learn certain strategies that of booking uh, you know booking with us um, lodging or arranging uh, airline tickets and learning techniques and how to save money and, and cut back from you know putting yourself in a situation where you know you're behind how did you obtain the necessary funds to start up your enterprise? Oh yes, I had a nice job working at airlines uh, uh, as an aircraft technician. So all the money I made there, I just put in my own business, and that's been what I've done since the beginning. And even when I got to a point where I wanted to do some other investments, I went back and worked some contract work, and I used all that money and invested in my business. So it's probably the the, the cheap man way of uh, building big business success, but. That is uh, my technique. Uh, a lot of times people use loans and things like that, which is fine. It's just you have to use what you have. And just like you know, I was mentioned that you know, I joined the Navy because I realized that I don't have to you know, go get a bunch of loans for education. I could just use uh, the education system there and also use the money that you get, which, that you invest in for your educational fund. Uh, so you know, we have to just look at the flexibility of the world we live in, the systems that are available, and, you know, and, you know, and, and then just, you know, look at all options clearly and then make certain decisions a lot of times we're just one track minded like everybody like we're all gonna go to college we're all gonna go to college and get degrees but you know there's also other options so people like myself are just taking different options to you know, to be where i'm at in, in my career as you know, as an entrepreneur professional so what pressures did you face in the early stages of your enterprise um, you know, when you have business, you have to. You know, the goal is to grow because that. You know, when you start a business, nobody in the world knows who you are and what you're about and what you do. So you have to spend so much time putting a lot of your resources into marketing yourself and also building a reputation for yourself. So you definitely want to have to make sure. You definitely want to make sure you answer your phone calls, return phone calls, answer emails, uh, reach out to people, you know, do a lot of networking, and all those things just grow over a period of time. 
So what type of outside help were you able to obtain while trying to build up your um, successful entrepreneurship? The main outside help is, uh, you know, you just reach out to friends and folks and let them know you're doing business. And naturally, you know, that's who you want to spend money with you and do business with you. And then, if, you know, if your, your folks uh, like your business and services, then, you know, more people come. Like, you know, most of the people I took with me to Africa the first set of times are just people I used to work with and just close friends. And now it's just, like, people from all over the world I don't even know. So, you know, you know once they saw you have a nice little reputation and they see the consistency, and they see the sincerity and they see the, the professionalism of you just following through the things they say you're going to do and you know people will be with you and you know, you know people see certain flaws and things but as long as you're consistent and you're sincere people will you know, support you and you just got to always just keep that in mind okay next question how did you find the key people for your enterprise Oh yes, uh, finding people, that's always a hard thing, so you just have to just keep recruiting and recruiting. You keep the best, you know, get rid of the rest and then keep recruiting. So it's like, a, it's probably a harsh thing to say and people probably look at it rough, but when you're trying to build something, you just, um, you know, you're consistently looking for loopholes and weak links and you just, your goal is to keep on getting rid of that aspect and keep building, you know, something that's going to stand the test of time. So you, you have to become a hardcore decision maker. Uh, you have to, you know. <laughs> Just uh, lay down the law. Yeah. So, do you spend more or less time at your enterprise now than in the earlier stage? Uh, more time. I'm just enjoying paradise. I uh, just, you know, most time I'm there in my business office. And, uh, you know, and unless I just have some uh, interviews or I have uh, meetings or I have uh, appointments for technical service and just do the work that needs to be done, get ahead of time, and then work on business and investment projects. A lot of things in the future where you know you can have the flexibility to kind of build from from ground up, you know, into the future, and you know, so it, there's no limitations. So you're always working on things that you want to do in the future. Like a big thing for us is is to set up our full-fledged enterprise here in Ghana, West Africa, to where we do all these things we used to do here at a higher level uh, and have a better connection. We're doing it in the world and have our own independent source of operation as far as our you know our infrastructure itself. So your earlier goals, have you met them now? Oh yes, absolutely. I've met uh, all of your earlier goals. You know, you usually have like five, ten-year goals. And uh, once you get, I've been in business uh, for 12 years doing Africa tours and 13 years doing technical service. Mm -hmm. So you know, you have, when you, once you get about five, ten years, you start, you, 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 uh, you have achieved some of your goals. But then you know, the bigger goal is you know, you know one day you want to have that corporate building with your name like Bomani Technology on there or Africa for Africans. And you want to be able to employ your, your entire family, your brothers and sisters, and then you want to be able to use the investment in that to you know, do certain things. So once you achieve those uh, smaller goals, then now you just set bigger goals. But the, the goal is to always set goals, and, and, and then ultimately you're setting goals for ge generational, you know, to build, you know, to build a gl global enterprise, and you know, for us to just really focus on doing the things that we need to do as a people. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> So, what are your present goals now? Yes, our present goal right now is um, in the next uh, few years to move our enterprise to Ghana, West Africa and set up um, a nice business enterprise to where we can just have the space we need for technical operation, have a lot of computers and parts and be able to just hire a fresh manpower of people. And also, uh, same thing with the Africa Tourism Investment. So looking at uh, this building, that's a nice two floor, uh, you know, a small business uh, building just to start out there and get everything moved over and have a designated uh, a tower for our internet and, uh, and and cell phone uh, communication that way we can just be efficient with business uh, so and then from there you know look into the spreading and keep growing so the, you know there's no limitation but that is definitely the uh, direction to build everything we want to build on the African continent what a nice goal so what would you do differently if you were to start all over again? Differently? I wouldn't say necessarily uh, anything uh, different. Uh, you know, you'd want to try to avoid some of the things that um, you know, to where you, know, you can move a little faster. But um, if I would have to say anything, it's um, you know, a lot of times you look back at business and you look back at all the money that uh, you just like, you know, I call it you know, champagne money, money you just waste and just, just spend because you know, business is good. Um, 
one of the things we have to do more is that we have to just invest more for our money. I'm one of the persons that just believe heavily in investment. Everything that I have around me is a level of investment. You know? Walk into Womani Technology, it's literally like technology operation just all over. Uh, and those are just, you know, those investments that create other opportunities and, you know, can naturally, you know, when you run an enterprise, you need your equipment and you know, the better equipment and technology you have, you know, you know, works out more for business. Uh, but uh, use in investing in this, um, you have things like we call stocks, uh, bonds, and uh, treasury bills in countries like Ghana, and then also this real estate development, uh, all on an international level. So it would be ideal to just put more money in that, uh, money that uh, you could have just saved from wasting. But the reality of it is uh, once you move your enterprise from here and you, you, you're making U.S. dollars in a country like Ghana, you have more flexibility because then you have cut out all of the waste of cash flow from the utility companies and the mortgage companies and so on. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the biggest things that you can do. And then you can focus more of that cash flow on investing in yourself and developing the surrounding areas. So what are the things that you find personally satisfying and rewarding as an entrepreneur? Yeah, yeah beyond the flexibility, just, um, you know, just uh, <laughs> I'm not going to say power, just, you know, just really, just, the main thing is just the flexibility to do the, all the other things that you need to do. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, beyond that, uh, it's just, uh, it's just a peaceful world of just being able to just have control over your schedule and your life and being able to just know adjust yourself the way you want to do it so you know I guess all of that literally still amounts to you know flexibility yeah. what advice will you give an aspiring entrepreneur aspiring entrepreneurs um, put together your organized business flow of what you're looking to do and then just you know just work on it little by little every day and you know the main thing at the end of the day is consistency and uh, and consistency, you know, will win you in, in, a, in, in a competitive world. And then having the, the world of documentation, uh, just having your information that's available in you know, a proper website is always ideal. Uh, more than so, just than being all over social media, uh, you know, a website that shows that your true work and things. So that at, at, more, at, at any moment, people are still going to refer back to your website, no matter how many millions of social uh, pages that you have on. And then just you know, focus on building. A level of cred credibility, building a level of just uh, focus where you can just really just connect what you're doing to your, your, the people around you, and then you know, whatever business you're building, build it in a reference to where you're you're sharing and you're connecting with your community, and you know you're growing with them, and you're you're using your resources to you know, not just get rich and not just do certain things. You're using it to be a part of a future uh, amongst your own. So. Those are some of the things definitely recommend, and then at the same time to also just cut back on unnecessary spending. It's yeah. one of those things where we buy a lot of things we don't need. I want to thank you, Bob Humani, for this wonderful and informational interview, and thank you for informing the community and other people around the world. Thank you. Absolutely, my sister. So.